Hi everyone, and welcome to The King of Cats. I was not scared of this game at first, and then when I booted it up and heard the music, I am now shaking in my boots. This game is supposed to be a short, sort of visual novel, visual, uh, just visual narrative experience. It is supposed to be sort of inspired by Jurassic Park. When I first booted up the game, there was actually a, a quote from Jurassic Park that popped up, which didn't help my fear, because the quote was something like, he was still alive when they ate him. Ooh, I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that at all. Regardless, apparently this game is about these people on a boat, I believe, and there are very violent tigers on board that end up getting out and start eating people, so. But, if you are interested, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because I've been doing polls and having people vote on what games I play on my channel, so if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and do that. But, I guess, without further ado, let's start. Santa Barbara, California, 1992. Also, apparently there's two endings to this game, so maybe I'll get both, we'll see. I'm so glad I have a bright light shining on me. I'd probably be actually like pissing myself. The rain patters lightly on the nylon cover hanging over the patio. The man stands next to his stool at a high table draped in gaudy checkered cloth. He opens his second beer and stirs a bowl of clam chowder without particular interest. Val Fortunato thought this might be the worst chowder he's tasted in his life. He drops the spoon into the soup and glances around the restaurant. The place is practically empty. Just a quaint little house on an ugly property that consists of mostly mud and cement. A row of California palm trees lines one side of the lot, marking the border between the next property over. Val leans against the table and sips his beer and waits. <laughs> the music, please. Thirty minutes and another beer and a half pass before the contact finally arrives. The man parks his car and hurries through the lot, shielding himself from the rain as he trots along. Val Fortunato. Finally, I feel like I've been waiting all day long. Sorry about that. I had to make a few quick calls. He's a slender man, dressed in khakis and a collared shirt with a zoo logo. It looks like a uniform. The seller brushes the rain off his clothes and sits at the stool directly across from Val. Not a problem. You want some dinner? Something to drink? Sure, why not? I drove two and a half hours to come here. I could use a bite and a beer. They call over the waiter and he takes their orders. The man orders two beers and asks for a rare steak and a side of baked potatoes. And you, sir? How's the chowder? It's the worst thing I've tasted in my life. The waiter is taken aback by how plainly Val tells him this. I want something else. Let me get... Ooh, okay. The same thing, steak and a side of baked potatoes, chicken sandwich with honey mustard, some bread and butter. Ooh. I'm so curious to know if even a choice like this is gonna affect my ending. I feel like it can't, you know what I mean? But I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna save. <laughs> okay. I am going to get some bread and butter. That's what I would get in real life because I don't eat meat. However, chicken sandwich with honey mustard, if I did, ooh, that sounds good, but bread and butter. That order some bread and butter. After the waiter leaves, the two men wait in silence for a moment. So, I hear you're in the market for cats. That's right. And I also hear any old zoo cat won't do. It has to be a special cat. You heard right. The man folds his hands on the table and smiles. I have something that will make your partners very happy. These cats are really something else. I got them out of the San Diego Zoo just in time. Another few hours and we wouldn't be having this conversation. 
Jesus, that bad? Yeah, two whole litters of them, even the damn cubs. Naturally, if you take them all, I'll cut you a nice discount. Naturally. So what do you say? You want the whole lot? The waiter arrives again with their food and drinks. He lays out the steak, potatoes, and two beers in front of the cellar, then puts down Val's bread. You gentlemen enjoy. The men stay silent until the waiter walks out of earshot. So, how's that bread? It's stale. But what the hell, it's free. He sticks a piece in his mouth and crunches away delightfully. Not bad, if I'm being honest. Val pulls a checkbook out of his pocket and lays it on the table. Let's discuss these cats. You got a pen? Oh. oh. Okay. When Val arrives back at his hotel room, he goes straight to the phone to call his longtime friend and business partner, David Kemp, doctor of wildlife biology. The man on the phone speaks with gruff and short tone. Hello? It, David, it's me. I met the seller. The deal seems legit. The man on the phone breathes a sigh of relief. Excellent. How many cats did you buy? About a dozen. Mostly cubs. From what I understand, the adults teach their cubs. So they were just gonna put the whole litter down. Jesus, even the cubs. These, those people are the real animals. What a novel sentiment. Somebody should make a movie about that idea. Hey, I'm serious. How can you live with yourself after murdering a baby animal? All right, Dave, I get you. I'm just busting your balls. I know. Are you making the arrangements with our longshoremen? Yeah, I'm on it, Dave. Is everything lined up into Tijuana? I think that's how you pronounce it. Naturally. One of my former colleagues pointed me to a gentleman by the name of... Well, that I don't remember. Something Spanish, in any case. He wants as many cats as he can get. Excellent. I'll call you when we're about to leave port. No, call me as soon as you set things up. I want to come along. On the ship? You gotta be shitting me. It's not gonna look suspicious as hell. But that's gonna look suspicious as hell. I don't care. This is a major investment, and I want to see it through. I'm also bringing along a friend. His name is Lindsay. I think you'll get along with him. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. If you say so, Dave. I'm also bringing Joey along. What the hell for? If we get in trouble with any local authorities, he'll come in real handy. He's got connections in California. We'll use them to put out any... fires, so to speak. All right, I'll call you as soon as we have a shipping date. Good, I'll see you then. The man on the other line hangs up the phone. Val sits in the silent hotel and stares out the window. The rain is coming down harder now than before. He doesn't like the idea of David coming along for the ride, let alone two of his lackeys. But as the two-thirds shareholder and bigger money spender, David is technically the boss. Val has no power but to make suggestions. He picks up the phone and calls the longshoreman to arrange transport for his newly bought cats. It's not gonna go good, I'll say that. They on board the cargo ship USS Black Road. Okay. Boy, the cargo ship left port four hours ago. The sun is setting in the red evening sky. The Black Grove is driving south towards Tijuana, Mexico. Val enters the commons and scans the room. He spots two men he recognizes, plus some members of the ship's crew. Ray Lindsay is the muscle man that Dr. Kemp hired, bald with a black mustache. He's a fit man with a pair of khaki shorts and sandals contrasting his leather jacket. Lindsay's outfit is like an international mercenary turned aging summer day. The huge revolver holstered on his belt completes the look. Joey Haynes is Dr. Kemp's lawyer. He got dragged along to deal with any problems from California authorities. 
now that they've left the States, his work is done and he's just along for the ride. His shirt is unbuttoned and his sleeves rolled up, and his wife beater is sweat soaked. The two men are hunched over the counter while they drink shots of scotch from the mini fridge. They turn around and acknowledge that. Oh god, I gotta come up with all these guy voices. I only have so many in my roster. Maybe I'll have to reuse the zookeepers. Uh, I'll save it for the, the lawyer guy, how about? He seems more like the voice I had. I don't know how to explain my thought process. Okay, don't worry about it. You know what, maybe I'll just use my regular voice for him since I gave the main character a different voice. Hey Val, want some? We were playing a little guessing game. Oh yeah? Yeah. What's Dr. Kemp's big secret cargo? You mean the cows? Joey cackles loudly. This fucking guy. No, not the cattle. Dr. Kemp obviously didn't bring me and Mr. Haynes along to protect cattle. The ship isn't even outfitted properly for that kind of job. It's gotta be something stored with the cattle. Or maybe inside them. It's just some beef or... Oh, it's just beef for some big Mexican zoo. Are you sure? I mean, have you seen any cows? Joey, this man is David Kemp's business partner. I'd wager he knows all about the secret cargo. Which I'm certain isn't beef. Is that right? What is it then? Mm. Cats, a bunch of cats, nothing but cows, automatic weapons, improvised explosives, and homemade mev. I'm saving again right quick. I'm just gonna try and save at all of the choices. But here's here's my thought process, because essentially in the description of the game, it says your choices basically decides who lives and who dies. So I feel like if I tell them the truth, they're going to be a little better equipped for when things go to shit. So I'm just going to say cats, a bunch of cats. Cats. A bunch of cats. The two men stare blankly. Cats. Yes. Exquisite cats. Cats specifically bred for the highest paying bidders in Mexico. And I suppose exquisite cat conventions are generally held in Tijuana? Naturally. Did you say cats? Yes, Joey, he said cats. I want to know what kind of cats we're talking about. Big cats? Dangerous cats? Val shrugs. I don't think they're dangerous. They're just for some wealthy breeders. Mexican cat breeders, eh? In any case, we've tranquilized them for the duration of this trip. Why'd you do that if they're not dangerous? To keep them calm, we don't want to scrape up a mountain of cat shit after we dock. Hold on a second. He sways drunkenly in a seat. There's one thing I'm still not clear about. What are cats doing on a boat? I'm starting to regret this. Joey laughs. I didn't know we were gonna. There were gonna be cats in the mix. Can we go play with them? What? You guys said there were cats. He meows. Oh. Cats like to play. They're tranquilized, Joey. He just told us that. Maybe you need to be tranquilized so you don't throw yourself overboard by mistake. Joey cackles and his cheeks brighten. That's a good one. Real good. Anyway, there's nothing to worry about. David and I have it under control. Dave. Val gestures to the drunken lawyer. Just keep an eye on this guy and make sure he doesn't fall off the boat. Last thing we need is drowning on our hands. Maybe saying cat was not the right move. We'll find out. In the Black Grove's helm, Captain Frank Walker fiddles with the radio. Heavy rain beats down on the windows as the ship sails southbound. Ship security officer, SSO, Genevieve Jean Antonia is at the captain's side, listening in on the call. What's going on, Captain? Should I do a British accent? Would that be fun? I'm really bad at them. I'm gonna try. Maybe not. Some kind of problem with the cargo. Hold on a second. So bad, I'm so sorry. The audio is distorted and difficult to understand. The voice of sailor Brian Morrison crackles through the speaker. In the cargo hold, over. 
Say again. You're breaking up. Over. There's something wrong in the... I don't know what's going... Say again. Over. I'm sorry. It's always Australian instead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't like this, Frank. First we're playing cruise ship with that millionaire and his little posse. Now a problem with the cargo? What are you talking about? I don't know. It's a weird coincidence. You saw the manifest, right? He's just shipping calves for zoo lions. He's probably here to help his staff feed and care for them. Relax, alright? If there's something wrong with the animals, we need to let him know. Or call his cabin once we know what's going on. Could just be a loose door or something. A loose door? Maybe some cows got loose. Who knows? The speaker continues crackling. Brian's voice comes through clearly for a moment. Send somebody down with the same chains and with some chains and padlocks over. The call cuts out. Roger that, sailor. Sending someone down. Over. Oh, I was like, who it the colors got me fucked up. Sailor Taylor. <laughs> Yes, sir. Grab some chains and padlocks from storage and take them to the cargo hold. Be quick about it. Yes, sir. The seaman marches away dutifully. Ooh, I heard. Ooh, I heard something on one side of my headphones. Ooh, I didn't like that. Okay. Sailor Morrison, this is Captain Walker. I'm sending Taylor down to help out. Over. Nothing comes to the speaker with static. Brian. Do you read me? Over. More static. Jean gives him a grave stare. I'm going down there after him. What for? Something's wrong, you'll hear about it any minute now. The safety of the cargo is my responsibility. I'm going down there. Excuse me, Captain. She storms out of the helm and hurries after Sailor Morrison. He's joined by second mate Florian Groots. Hey, Cap. What's all that about? Or what was all that about? Jane's worried about a millionaire's calves. What for? We're locked and loaded with combat shotguns. We don't need to worry about a bunch of illiterate pirates. No, no. It's not parts she's worried about. Then what? Well, I don't know. Something about the millionaire and his cows. Excuse me. He holds up the receiver and speaks. Jane, any updates? Over. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. In the cargo hold, the distinct sound of crackling radio echoes through the austere metal halls. The distorted voice of Captain Walker comes through in a mess of white noise. Brian, do you read me? Over. Sailor Morrison clicks his radio off and latches it to his belt. He scans the hold with the tranquilizer rifle trembling in his hands. The cargo hold is dimly lit. Several light bulbs seem to not work at all. The exit is only a few yards away. But each step he takes thunders through the metal hall. He steps slowly and dutifully toward the door. Just as he reaches the door, someone on the other side spins the valve and swings it open. There's a man on the other side. Brian levels the tranquilizer rifle at the stranger. I already forgot all these dudes' voices. There's a lot of characters. I'm sorry. Hey, chill out. It's me. Jesus, Eric. You scared me. He lowers the rifle. Come on. Let's get out of here and lock up the door. What's going on? There's a bunch of goddamn cats loose. Cats? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Big orange tigers. Holy shit. Did you tell the captain? Of course I did. Now grab those chains and come on. They exit the cargo hold and push the heavy metal door shut and stand in the downpour. Taylor holds up the chains like the pile of slimy worms slipped in the rain. Come on, man. Don't you know how to seal a door? Give me the goddamn thing. Eric haphazardly dumps the chains into Brian's hands. Brian lifts the heavy chains and heaves them over the valve. The valve twists and the door creaks open and slides ajar under the weight of the chains. Shit. Push that fucking thing shut. 
door flings open and smacks into Brian, sending him stumbling backwards. He points the tranquilizer rifle in the general direction of the door and fires. The dart clangs against the bulkhead. I know where this is going. <laughs> oh. There's nothing visible in the shadows beyond the open door creaking in the rain. Something growls from inside. Oh shit. Brian racks the bolt of the tranquilizer rifle and fishes around his pockets for another dart. Okay, when I said I knew where this was going, I thought it was going to bounce off and hit the other guy and he was going to be tranquilized. I guess not, you know? Things always can surprise you. Shoot the damn thing, man. Shut up and let me... A tiger lunges out of the shadows without a sound. It moves with impossible speed. It grabs Eric and tackles him to the deck in the fallen rain. The big cat locks its snarling jaws around his throat and clamps down. His neck breaks so quickly that he doesn't have time to scream. Well, I suppose that's a mercy in and of itself. The animal drops his limp body on the wet deck and turns its head back at Brian with dilated eyes. He doubles back to cargo door, boots squeaking against the slicked metal as the tiger's paws patter behind him. He lunges through the doorway and pulls the door shut behind him. It shuts with such force that it nearly bounces back a jar. But he quickly grabs the valve and pulls it shut before the animal can slip inside. He tries to seal the door, but his slicked hands slide off the wet valve. Come on, you bastard! Something growls behind him, and his stomach feels like concrete. He turns around slowly and extends the flaps of his coat to make himself look bigger and he freezes with horror when he sees the rest of the litter in the cargo hold. Standing between rows of huge crates, an adult tiger watches him with a pair of cubs at its flanks. Another dozen feet back, there's another family of tigers, two adults and some cubs. Brian doesn't care to count them all. The adult is frozen in a walking posture with dilated eyes fixed on him curiously. Somewhere in his mind, it reminds him of a cat playing with its toy, and his terror becomes extreme. He drops a coat flap and uses his free hand to produce three darts from his pocket. The tigers watch him curiously. They seem hesitant to make a move. Brian can hear the big male outside clawing at the door. He fixes the rifle at the nearest adult cat. Then he chambers one dart and clamps the other two between his teeth. He mutters through his clenched jaws. Say goodnight, you big bastard. He squeezes the trigger and the sound of compressed air startles the big animal and sends it nearly six feet into the air. The dart whizzes past the adult and hits a tiny cub across the room. The little animal cries out pitifully. The animals dart around in collective panic before they calm down and refocus their attention on Brian. In their eyes, he sees a great primordial firestorm bearing down on him. He lets out his breath slowly. Oh no. Not good. Jean stomps down the stairwell toward the cargo. Jane, any updates? Over. I'm almost there. Hang on. Over. When she rounds the next corner, she beholds a sight of baffling horror. She sees Brian stagger through the door and slam it shut behind him. All the while, a large tiger jogs playfully through the rain toward the newly sealed door. The cat regards the closed door with puzzlement and turns around to toy with its new plaything. Taylor lies in a crumpled pile soaking in the rain. Blood drips down his arms and washes away on the metal floor. A tranquilizer dart protrudes from the animal's shoulder and it doesn't seem to mind very much. Jean takes careful, quiet steps back into the cover. Back into cover and up the stairs. When she reaches the upper deck, she breaks into a sprint and rips the radio from her belt. Mayday, Captain! Mayday! Come in! Over! What's going on, Jane? There's a goddamn tiger loose on the ship. Over. A what? Get the shotguns, Frank. Out. Boy, while the three men sit at the counter and drink, somebody sprints past the windows. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Val and Lindsay are startled. Joey does not notice. What was that? 
It looked like a member of the crew, but I couldn't tell. What the hell are you guys talking about? Nothing, Joey. Go back to sleep. I wasn't sleeping. Then have another drink and let the adults handle the situation. Lindsay stands up from the stool and marches to the door. Where are you going? Dr. Kemp's cabin. I'm going to have a word with him. Wait a minute. About what? About the cargo. God damn it. What's wrong? Nothing, Joey. Don't worry about it. Val hurries out of the comments and follows Lindsay. Joey chuckles to himself while he fills up another glass. Guess the old boy can't handle his liquor. Maybe telling the truth was the wrong choice. I think Joey's done. <laughs> Jean bursts into the helm and slams the door shut behind her. She fra frantically spins the valve to secure the door. Frank, Cruz, and navigator Michael Kroger watch in baffled silence. They're armed with three of the four SPA S12 shotguns kept in the helm. I don't know anything about those. Jane, what's going on? She rushes to the case and grabs the fourth gun. There's a goddamn animal on the loose. It killed Taylor. Oh my god. Kill? Sorry, I didn't see him on screen, so I was like, who? What about Salem Morrison? He locked himself inside the cargo hold. I think he's fine. Have we heard from him on the radio? No. I've been calling. Oh, God. You think there could be more of them? Horrified silence hangs over the room. Jean finishes loading the shotgun and moves straight for the door. I need one of you to come with me. Well, I need to stay here. I've just turned the ship around and radio Santa Barbara. I need to answer them if they call. Kroger, why don't you go? What? Hold on. I need to stay here and navigate the ship. You don't have time to argue. Somebody, anybody, come with me. She marches out of the helm, toting her shotgun, and leaves the open do door open in the rain. Frank and Michael stare awkwardly at each other before Cruz speaks. I'll go. Probably. I probably have the second most range time after Jean. Between the two of us, I'm sure we'll be fine. Ooh, who, accomp who accompanies Jean to the cargo hold? Ooh. I feel like Florian is probably the better option. Because like Florian said, second most range practice, and also I feel like... I feel like we kind of need the captain. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna save again, and I'm gonna pick Florian. All right, be careful, Michael. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have volunteered you. Kroger shrugs. Hey, it happens. I'll stay in Lorraine and let you know if anything comes up. I'll and I'll latch the door behind you. Cruz nods and hurries to the door. When Lindsay arrives at the cabins, he firmly latches the door behind him. He takes half a dozen steps before somebody opens it again. It's Val. He closes and latches the door behind him. Hey, Lindsay, hold on. I wanted a quick word with you. What is it? He hesitates. I wouldn't bother Dave if I were you. He's a bit, uh, irritable about this whole thing. You think I'm worried about him firing me? Lindsay scoffs. If you don't want me to upset your friend, why don't you tell me what's in the cargo? Val rubs his brow and sighs heavily. Alright, look. I'm sorry for being evasive earlier, but Dave made me swear silence. When I said we're shipping cats, I was only kinda lying. We're actually, uh, tigers. Man-eating tigers. Excuse me? Yeah, I know. I was telling the truth about them being tranquilized. I guess I didn't give them enough. I'm assuming there was never an actual veterinarian involved. Dave thought he could figure out the doses on account of his biology degree. Lindsay rolls his eyes and laughs humorously. Okay, that's on them. <laughs> I not not to say this whole thing from the beginning isn't on them, but like 
if you're gonna have like incredibly dangerous animals and then not figure out how much tranquilizer they need that is completely and utterly on you but okay I don't believe this shit he storms down the hall to Kemp's cabin and lets loose a storm of knocks Dr. Kemp I need to speak with you immediately he stops knocking and waits silence Lindsay glares at Val and gives him a blank shrug. I don't know. Guess he left. Maybe the captain called him to the helm. Maybe he went to the commons or on the opposite side of the ship. Ooh. Where did Val and Lindsay go next? Okay, 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 okay. How about... I know he's not in the helm, so how about back to the commons? Let's head back to the commons. We need to let Joey know what's going on. We'll just call the helm from there. Okay, let's go. The horizon is dark purple as the light fades to light. Jean jogs to the bottom of the stairs and steps cautiously toward the cargo hold. The captain speaks on the intercom and his voice thunders in the remaining expanse. He warns the crew to lock themselves in their current locations until further notice. Jean rounds the corner and spots the cargo hold door swinging open on its edges. Somebody drops the chains in the doorway, preventing it from fully closing. There's no blood or any sign of a struggle. Jean steps slowly through the ring and approaches the swinging door. Light footfalls thud on the metal steps behind her. It's first mate moves. Hey! Come on! I think they're inside. She points at the open door. Follow me and watch my back. Cruz nods. Jean steps closer to the door with the barrel of the shotgun pointed into the dark aperture. She reaches the door and pushes it open cautiously. Then she bolts to the door, bolts the door open to keep it from swinging shut. Jean enters the dim cargo hold while Florian Cruz stands outside and watches her back. She scans the room quickly. It's completely empty. No sign of Morrison or Taylor. No sign of any tigers. Jesus Christ, what's going on? Jean, the cats are outside. Jean swings around and points her shotgun up to the room. At the same moment, Cruz raises her shotgun and fires at something Jean cannot see. Jean hears a tiger cry out and whimper. A tense moment passes before she speaks. Jean? I'm right behind you, Florian. What just happened? I shot the damn thing and it ran away. It took a round of buckshot like a champ. I can't believe I even had the time to shoot him. Or her. Anyway, that scratch one tiger. Maybe. There's nothing in here. We need to get back to the helm. Okay, well, things are going okay so far. Distant gunshots dissipate to the storm as Lindsay and Val walk to the commons. Sounds like the crew's privy to your little plan. Our plan. We're in this together, remember? Actually, we're not. See, I don't know how much Joey knew, but I was kept in the dark. If anything, I'd say you and Dr. Kemp are both guilty of fraud. But that's neither here nor there. Come on. When they reach the commons, the door swinging wildly open and Joey is nowhere to be seen. Shit, he's gone. And the dumb son of a bitch left the door open. Oh god. Lindsay closes the door to the commons and seals it shut. He probably went to vomit over the railing. Hope he didn't fall over him. We can't waste our time babysitting an alcoholic moron. Let's get to the helm. Dr. Kemp is already in the helm. He's embattled in a shouting match with Captain Walker. You son of a bitch! Do you realize what you've done? You're responsible for multiple deaths. Would you please calm down and be reasonable? I know I screwed up, but yelling at me won't fix anything. Ah. Here are my associates, Val Fortunato and Ray Lindsay. 
Maybe they can help clear up this whole misunderstanding. Dr. Kemp, I came here to have a word with you, but it seems my point's already been made. You've acted with complete reckless disregard. Me? You should ask Val how the cats got out in the first place. Everyone is silent. The group turns toward Val. Please, Val, enlighten us. Well, uh... Earlier this evening, Dr. Kemp sent me down to feed the cats and gave them their tranquilizers. And that was just before they got loose. You son of a bitch. Take it easy, okay? I don't know what happened. They must have spat out the pills I put in the meat. Right. And now I feel vindicated. It's not my fault the animals got loose. You're insane, Dr. Kemp. How dare you talk to me like that? I'm paying you handsomely for... You can keep my paycheck. I want nothing to do with your shaggy operation. We need to stop arguing and figure out what to do. Well, we're secure in here. We can just wait until we get back to port and then wait for animal control. Captain, I disagree. We need to check on the rest of the crew. Namely, Chief, or Chef, and the rest of the sailors. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. We checked the commons. Joey's gone missing. Damn that stupid son of a bitch. I'll search the ship and see if I can find him. Someone should come with me. Cruz? I'll go. I gotta do something to help clean up this mess. Let me have one of those shotguns, though. I feel a bit naked with something... with nothing but my wheel gun. Gene nods. Here, take mine. I need to stay up here and navigate the ship. I can go too. Three guns is better than two. I'll stay here and get on the radio. Let the authorities know we have a couple delinquents on the board. Alright, let's go find Joey, Chef, and the rest of the sailors. Okay. I think only... One person has died so far. Will that continue? I don't know. Jean, Lindsay, and Cruz march through the rain and rain by and by. They go downstairs to the lower deck and investigate the dining hall. Jean opens the door and looks inside. The lights are off and she can't see anything in the shadows. Oh God. Jean enters slowly with her shotgun extended. She flicks the light switch. When the light comes on, she scans the room quickly. No sign of anyone or the tigers. Lindsay and Cruz follow her in. They cross the room to the galley door. Jean swings the valve and pulls open the door. Chef is standing on the other side with a baffled expression. His arms have been his arm has been torn and his white apron is soaked red, but he managed to not lose his chef's hat. I could not read that sentence for the life of me, holy shit. Jesus Christ, it's you guys. For a second, I was worried the cats learned how to open doors. He chuckles humorlessly. Chef, are you okay? You look hurt pretty bad. I'm fine. I've stopped the bleeding. Can't really grab anything with this arm, though. You should come with us. We've got medical supplies in the helm. Alright, that sounds good. Cruz leads the way back out into the rain. And an orange blur swipes her out of view with a blink of an eye. Uh oh. Holy shit! Chef sprints back into the galley and slams the door shut behind him. Jean and Lindsay rush out to the deck to try and help Cruz. When they step into the rain, they see the tiger swishing tail as it disappears around the corner from the cargo hold. Cruz's limp feet dangle along the ground. Son of a bitch. Jean says nothing. There's no sign of Cruz, like she had never even stood there. Oh boy. The captain is on the radio talking to the mainland. Michael Kroger is busy navigating the ship. Dr. Kemp leans toward Val and whispers. We've got to get out of here before we get to shore. I was thinking the same thing. Lifeboat, 
Yeah, lifeboat. What about Joey? He could be cat food for all we know. Can't just leave him. See if we can find him along the way. But I'm not going to bend over backwards. The crew is distracted. I'm gonna walk to the head and then slip out. You wait 60 seconds and do the same thing. No way, I'm going first. What? You got me into this whole mess by talking me into this. Hey, come now. Oh, come on. I said a completely different word. Now's not the time. All I was supposed to do is feed the damn cats. Well, you fucked that up, and now we're here. Now here we are. Good lord. You son of a bitch. Quiet. Look, whether you believe it or not, I'm on this trolley ride with you. I don't like where it's heading any more than you do. If you must go first, then go. I'll wait a minute and catch up. Okay. Let's do this, Dave. Standing over the radio console, the captain nods and keeps talking. Yeah, that's right. I said Tigers. Look, I don't know how. Just get animal control to the port before we show up. The Alan Kemp rendezvous in the rain on the upper deck. There you are. Come on. Let's get down to the lifeboat before one of those assholes spots us and locks us in the brig. Yeah, or before one of the cats eats us. Very funny. Let's go. You're stupid. I'll say that. Escape when you, like, get to land, perhaps? I don't know if going out in the dark in the rain with animals that can see way better than you in the dark are, like, literally on the loose and violent. Just a thought, but whatever. The two men sneak down the stairs and head toward the rear of the ship. Neither man is familiar with cargo ships, but they assume the lifeboats must be on the lower deck. When they find the lifeboat, Joey is already there. Oh, he's still alive? Goddamn. He's tugging uselessly at the straps on the tarp and doesn't notice their approach. Hey, dipshit. Joey jumps and spins at the startled cat. Jesus, I thought you were one of the sailors. What are you doing, Joey? Are you gonna take the lifeboat and leave us all? No. Don't worry about it. I'm sure there's room for three. Maybe if you can figure this crazy thing out, we've been working on it for 20 minutes. You've been standing out here completely exposed for 20 minutes? Yeah, so... Joey. You're aware there are tigers loose on the ship, right? Joey laughs and rolls his eyes. Yeah, sure. Okay, guys. Be serious, Joey. The man-eating tigers we were transporting loose. Joey's expression settles into solemn seriousness. We were shipping tigers. You're kidding me, right? Why were you planning on abandoning ship if you didn't know about the tigers? When I went looking for you guys, I overheard someone talking in the hell. It sounded like they were routing us out. They said we're going back to California. Yeah, isn't it? Because of the tigers. Oh. Well, this is all starting to add up. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Tigers can swim, though, bro. <laughs> I'll say that for sure. I know tigers can swim. This tarp is tied down with a bunch of coal. Joey, are you drunk or just a complete fucking moron? Joey says nothing. Valen hooks the bungee cord and carefully pulls it away. All you have to do is push the two hooks together. Just be careful so it doesn't come back and smack you in the face. Valen. What? He turns and sees what renders the man speechless. A large tiger stands on the deck watching them, its fur soaking in the rain. The eyes are dilated and laser focused on the blue man. Oh shit. Shut up. What do we do? I said shut up. The tiger lowers its head and prepares to pass. Oh fuck this. 
Joey spins round and breaks into a sprint down the wet deck. You're done. Joey! Kemp lifts the tarp and jumps into the lifeboat, then yanks it back down over himself. Tiger seems startled by the abrupt chaos, but now it's ready to pounce again. Ooh, Val decides to... Mm. Val decides to save, I'll say that. I think hiding in the lifeboat might be... I feel like he has the right idea. Let's do it. Val rushes to the lifeboat and pulls the tarp to jump inside of Kemp, but Kemp is holding the tarp down tight. Bitch, let me in! Dave, it's me. Let me in. He tugs on the tarp again, but Kemp's grip won't budge. Oh, I, well, I guess I didn't count him on, didn't count on him being a, just a bitch. You son of a bitch. The tiger roars and tackles Val. God damn it. He cannot comprehend the speed and power with which he was taken down. The animal snorts, and he can feel its hot breath in his ears. It licks him before it goes for the kill. Val screams. Then everything goes black. There's no longer any sight or sound in Val's world. Everything has dissolved away into peaceful solitude. The tiger drags its fresh prey and drops in the next ne drops it next to the lifeboat. A small swarm of cubs comes out from under the stairwell and begins feasting on the dead flesh. The tiger turns its attention to the strange creature hiding under the tarp. It reaches in and paws gently at the hidden lung. The small creature is trying its best to stay motionless when the cat detects the food to swim. The tiger stands up on its hind legs and drops its forelegs under the front of the worm under the tarp. Kemp shrieks under the crushing weight. The animal grabs the tarp with its teeth and violently reveals the terrified prey. The man just sits curled up inside the lifeboat while the animal watches him curiously. It paws him as if to check his death to arrive. Kemp can hear the baby animals feasting on the corpse of his companion. While he does his best to stay still, the tiger leans its head inside and bites the collar of his shirt. It lifts him gently out of the lifeboat and drops him on the deck like a newborn baby. The rain falls in heavy sheets against the metal floor. Kemp just sits there shielding his head and neck from the blow that cannot be deflected. The cubs turn their attention from the fresh kill and look at this cowering animal. The adult tiger steps back and sits down to observe while the cubs excitedly prepare for their first kill. That didn't go super well. But I am not going to go back because I want to organically get the ending that I get and then I will go back and make some other choices. <laughs> so clearly that just showed me that hiding under the tarp is not uh, not correct. So we'll try something else next time. <laughs> Chef is napping in the corner of the room with bandages around his arm. Jean, the captain, and Lindsay huddle in a corner and discuss their next move. This is getting out of control. Jesus, I know that. Oh, that's... wrong guy. Jesus, I know that. That was very British. I never said I was good at accents. You got a goddamn suggestion or what? There we go. How about this? I'm gonna solve this problem myself. What the fuck are you talking about? They're cats. Cats like to nest. I'll find their nest and I'll lock it up. Otherwise, I'll shoot every last one of them. Fucking A. Uh, no, I don't think so. It sounds like a suicide mission. Everybody's accounted for. All we need to do is sit here, keep the door shut, and wait. Michael will take us into port and animal control will do the rest. All due respect, Captain. I prefer Jean's plan. I'm going if you like it or not. The ship's safety is my responsibility. I should have stopped this from happening in the first place. The captain opens his mouth to protest, then hesitates. Alright, go ahead. I'll stay on the radio and let you know if there's any news. Good luck, Jean. Sure. Somebody knocks loudly on the door. They twist the valve and swing it open. 
It's Joey. Jesus, who are you? The disheveled man speaks with a heavy slur. I'm Joey Haynes, the doctor's lawyer. Holy fuck, you would not believe the night I've had. What happened? So, uh... Val and Kemp are both dead. What? Yeah, I think the tiger's got him. I'm not really sure. But I'm here, and I'm more than happy to answer for my crimes instead of... Well, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, so here I am. Somebody locked this asshole in the brig. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna put down these fucking cats. I'll come with. I wouldn't miss an opportunity to shoot a fucking tiger. Jean and Lindsay march out of the helm and stop in the rain. Before we go any further, we should come up with a plan. Where do we go first? Ooh, ooh, okay. Hmm. Let's go. Okay, let's go up, up. Why not? There's nothing here. Never mind. Lower deck. There's nothing here. Never fucking mind. Cargo hold. Oh, tiger. The adult tiger knocks her to the ground before she knows what's happening. The last thing she hears is Lindsay's agonized screams. Everything goes black and Jean falls into a state of overwhelming placidity. Well, that was... stupid. The captain calls out through the radio. Jean, are you there? Come in, over. No lie. Come in, Jane. What's your status? God damn it. When the ship lands in California, the event that follows is known as the Santa Barbara Massacre. Animal control agents sweep the cargo ship room by room before the remaining tigers launch, launch a dizzying ambush. The animals kill one agent and manage to wound three more in the ensuing chaos. The survivors retreat back to the safety of the port. An hour-long siege ensues before the local SWAT unit finally storms the ship. Two more operators are killed in the fight against the final remaining tiger. The authorities retrieve the survivors from the helm in the cabins before they begin tallying the dead. Animal control agents take away the surviving cubs to be euthanized. However, the cubs mysteriously disappear just hours before their scheduled demise. In the end, life returns to normal for the survivors. Posthumously, Dr. David Kemp becomes known by local media outlets as the Kitten King, or the King of Kents. But those who had survived the incident aboard the Black Road just remember him as an asshole with too much money. Ooh, ew. Oh, I don't like that. Too bad, buddy. Bad ending. Yeah, I figured. You got the protagonists killed. I guess maybe... The reason they died so lamely like that is because I got the main character killed. I think that's why. So, you know what? I wanted to get both endings, so I'm fine with the bad ending, and then I can leave it on a high note, you know what I'm saying? But, boy oh boy. I like that it shows the survivors and casualties. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. Memory of Miles Myslinski? That sounds right. Written and programmed by Witching Metal Productions. Logo Tiger Sprite and Achievement Icon by Babbity Babbit. Character Sprites by Rate Visual Works. Okay. I mean. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's like a shorter visual novel experience. I thought there was actually going to be more, like, controlling and playing. I didn't think it was going to be, like, a true, more, like, visual novel sort of thing. Um, I'm happy about that, though. I love visual novels. Love, 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 love. That is not a minus for me. I would have been fine either way. But 
I am going to go back and make some different choices, and I will show you guys any different things that come up. Um, I think the only thing I'm going to do for right now is go back, and instead of having him hide in the thing with Dr. Kemp, I'm going to have him do something else. So I will show you the outcome of that and see if we can get a better ending that way. So be right back. Okay, we are going to run with Joey this time. Because Joey's so gone, so... Val sprints after Joey. The drunken lawyer stumbles over his own feet and trips. Val leaps over him and keeps running. Joey cries out desperately. Wait for me, Val! He doesn't turn back to look at Joey when he hears the tiger roar. Joey screams for a split second before his voice is cut and roughly short. Val runs up the stairs to the upper deck and keeps running until it reaches the home. Tiger drags Joey Haynes' fresh corpse and drops it next to the lifeboat. Okay, so this I think this is all going to be the same. Well, I guess running with him somehow doesn't work out very well, so... I'm going to continue on my own a little bit just to see if it changes anything else. I will let you know if it does. Okay, this is going to be a little different since it's Valve. They twist the valve and swing it open. It's Val Fortunato. What happened to you? Uh, nothing. I just went out for a walk and now I'm back. I'm, uh, here. Back. I tried to escape on a lifeboat, okay? I think Dave and Joey are both dead. Jesus Christ. Somebody lock this asshole in the brig. Okay, and if you don't mind, I'll be on my way to put down these fucking cats. I'll come with. Wouldn't miss an opportunity to shoot a fucking tiger. Okay, so this is the same. I'm gonna see if anything's different here. We'll find out. Upper deck? Okay, nothing there. What if I do a different order? Cargo hold? Maybe it's the same. Okay. It's all the same right now, so never mind. BRB. Alright, this time, let's hang on the railing over the ocean. Val leaps over the edge of the ship and holds onto the railing with all his strength. He hangs on the side of the boat with his knees knocking against the metal hull. Joey screams in the distance. A moment passes as the ocean roars beneath him. The tiger's paws stamp through the pools of water collecting on the deck. Val feels the cat's whiskers brush his fingers. Fright loses his grip. Then he feels his grip. The cat is He gently paws his hand and sticks its claws into Val's fingers. Shit. Val kicks his feet in a wild panic and the cat responds by nibbling his hand. It seems to be playing. He shrieks and loses his grip. Val drops into the ocean with a falling rock. He flails his arms and tries to paddle with the undertow sucks him down. As he drags underwater, his screams are muted by the bubbling abyss. But by some miracle, the current yanks him clean past the ship's propellers. That's was lucky as hell. He emerges disoriented in a swamp of sea foam left behind by the huge vessel. When he regains his bearings, he begins to appreciate the gravity of the situation. The boat is driving away without him. He reaches his arms under the water and screams, Help! His head dunks underwater as he desperately treads back to the surface. And he resurfaces and screams again. Man overboard! Nobody seems to have noted his cries for help. Somewhere in the back of his head, he recalls swimming classes he took as a youth. He paddles frantically after the cargo ship. Fifteen minutes pass, and he stops swimming. His arms and legs burn with exhaustion. He stops to tread water and looks at the ship. Looks like a toy on the horizon, tiny and plastic. He looks around. There's no close line of any other ship than this. He weeps with crushing despair as he keeps swimming. He led Val to a drowning at sea. Oh no! And it killed Joey? What are the odds, bro? Damn. The tiger drags Joey Haynes' fresh corpse and drops it next to the lifeboat. God damn, well. Uh, 
I guess there's no winning in any of the situations, so let's keep going, I guess. Ooh, okay, this is different. I chose the cargo hold, and then I chose the lower deck. So there's something different. An uneasy feeling strikes Jean as she walks through the rain, pouring on the lower deck. Jean steps carefully through the rain with her shotgun extended. The rain falls around her in heavy sheets. She steps onto the deck and scans her shattered surroundings. Lindsay follows behind her. Nothing yet to see. Jean cautiously advances with her shotgun leading the way. The rain pours relentlessly. She swings around the corner and sees a cluster of tiger cubs taking cover from the rain under a metal overhang. And among the cats lies, lies the remains of several mauled human beings. Two meaty skeletons are mutilated in the tiger's nest. Nothing but gnawed and fatty bones. They must be Sailor Taylor and Sailor Morrison. She recognizes the recently deceased corpse of Dr. Kent. His stomach and legs have been thoroughly picked clean by tiny teeth and claws. Cruz's body had been ripped into two and apparently shared between the adults. A hearty meal indeed. And finally, the scotch-soaked corpse of Joey Hanks. The tigers had barely touched him. Perhaps they were saving him for a fine occasion. They stand and behold the sickening sight. Then Lindsay speaks. Hold on. You know what this means, right? A bunch of cubs without their mother? He's interrupted by a guttural sound. Oh shit. She spin. Oh no. Oh god. Oh no. She spins around and aims her shot. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. I missed. Jean sees nothing but an impression of blurred fur, eyes, and wet teeth. I didn't know it was going to show up like that. They open fire on the advancing tiger. The big cat falls limp with a pitiful- Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Falls limp with a pitiful wail. Tries to get back on all fours, but it just slumps over. The poor animal drags itself on the floor and mules like a wounded house cat. This one has the tranquilizer dart protruding from its shoulder. It's the animal that killed Sue and Morrison. Lindsay points his gun at the dying animal and puts it out of its misery. Even if she wanted to protest, Jean has no energy. She was glad to see the creature dead. Damn. Okay. After dispatching the adult, Jean and Lindsay block the nest with crates and return to the home. Hours later, the USS Black Grove arrives in Santa Barbara. When the FBI arrive in Santa Barbara, they vigorously interrogate everybody who survived the event. None of the survivors are found guilty of any involvement in the operation. A thorough investigation determines Ray Lindsay had been hired under false pretenses. Animal Control collects the last of the tiger litter and schedules them for euthanasia at the local zoo. However, the cubs, okay, they still mysteriously disappeared. In the end, life returns to normal for the survivors. Okay, king of cats, asshole with too much money. Is this a good end? Clever girl, good ending. Okay, the protagonist survived. I totally thought that there was going to be a way to save Val, but I guess not. Interesting. Okay, I think... Here's why I think that's so interesting, is because you would expect to have the option to save everyone even if it was like their fault you know what i'm saying like even if it's like their involvement but it's so funny that the good ending still comes if you have you know two of the characters dead you know val and dr kemp i think it's kind of kind of funny how it's almost like a karma situation you know what i'm saying that's so interesting okay i wonder if there's any way to save them I think I'm going to toy around on my own a little bit. Um, in a, I'll let you know if I find anything, otherwise you'll see my outro, but I kind of want to just see if there's a way to save them, or I wonder if no matter what, it just is what it is. So, BRB. Alright everybody, I played a little bit more, and I made a few discoveries, um, but the main discovery is that there is no way that I found at all to save everybody or even both dr kemp and val 
and Joey, like all three of those dudes. Uh, I did find out that there is actually a way if you choose to have the captain go with Gene instead of have Cruz go, he can get very, very injured and he does end up dying. Um, so don't take the captain with you. But otherwise, there's also a way for Ray, the the guy, the good guy, the better guy. I forgot his name. Ray? Is that his? I don't know. There's a way for him to get injured, but he ends up living. But he just he just gets injured. He doesn't die. Um, but he is unable to go with Jean at the very end, so she ends up dying. So you still get the bad end. So there's it's it's a toss up. You know, you you can't save everybody. Something bad happens, but. I'm glad I was at least able to find out all the different choices and kind of go through go through everything there. I don't know if I got all the achievements. I think I did, but you never know. <laughs> Otherwise, that was The King of Cats. I think that was pretty good. I mean, it's definitely not my usual genre. I mean, it's a visual novel, which is my usual, but I don't know. This is a free game. Again, I love I love playing free games. If you know anything about me or see any other games that I play, I love free games. Like little free games, little free visual novels, that sort of thing. Makes me little twiddle my little fingers, you know? Like I just, I love free games. And this is one that is totally free to download, free to play. And I can tell some love went into it, you know? I think the creators did a really good job. This is a good game, you know? Am I gonna say that this is like, a hidden gem everybody should play this this is amazing crazy no but that's just a personal preference thing not a quality thing for me quality wise i think this is really good i mean the music chilling as hell and i think it really did invoke jurassic park energy because that's very much one of their biggest if not the biggest inspiration for the game it's it's on their steam page it's in the about everything like that they start out with the the quote when you boot up the game like it is very Jurassic Park coded, and I can certainly tell. Thank you so, so much for watching. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. If you want to experience it for yourself, go ahead. I will include the link in my description, because again, it's totally free. Why not download it? Show some support to them. Uh, I'm sure it would mean a lot to them. Go ahead and like the video if you liked it. Share it with everybody and everybody if you so choose. Especially if you made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. I think it would be very silly if you watched this whole video and didn't subscribe. Everything will be down in my description. Find me on Instagram. Like I said in the beginning, I am doing polls for games. So since I finished this game, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I will be holding another poll next week to see what I will be playing next. I do also stream weekly on Twitch. It's at least every Monday evening. If more than that, I try. I make no promises though. I work full time and I get tired and I make these videos also. So I try more, but if you want to see me live stream, I am on Twitch. And also I post my Twitch streams on my channel. So if you like to put something on in the background or you just want to watch me stream, those are on here as well if you'd like to check them out. They're in a playlist on my channel. But otherwise, thank you so, so much again. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week for a new game. And until then, please don't get involved with illegal cat selling and buying these animals were done dirty and i'll say that for sure otherwise have a good one everyone